Hello biologists, we're here to review the 2.25 unit test uh, for biological compounds here at MNBA Biology. Remember this unit was about organic compounds. It was about carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids. The first thing we studied were sugars. Sugars are part of the carbohydrates group. Carbohydrates are sugars and sugars stuck together to make starch which is a polysaccharide, a type of complex carbohydrate. Polysaccharide means many sugars. Remember that carbohydrates are made up of the three elements carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. And if you forget, carb stands for carbon, O for oxygen, and HYD, hide, for hydrogen. Which three elements are in all carbohydrates? Well, of course, what we just talked about, oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. Fructose and fructose are both examples of carbohydrates. Starches are another example of carbohydrates. If you stick a bunch of glucoses together, which plants do to store energy, starches have lots of branching, bran branching chains which makes lots of room for enzymes to break down starches by cutting these bonds. The more chains you have, the more places you have for enzymes to get in there and cleave the glucose to glucose bond and get that starch back into glucose. This is glycogen, and if you look closely, you can see every one of these little circles is a glucose. Glycogen is how animals store their glucose. They stick a whole bunch of glucoses together in branched chains to store glucose for long term. Notice both glucose, or both glycogen and starch, have lots of branching chains. You can clip off up to 30,000 glucose units in glycogen, and this happens in your liver all the time and you don't even realize it. You can look carefully and find all the glucose in lots of branch chains. Branch chains are very important. It's lots of places for enzymes to start working on glycogen and breaking it back down to glucose when your body needs energy and doesn't want to store it. There are some similarities between starch, which is how plants store glucose, and glycogen, which is how animals store glucose. They both have branch chains and they both store glucose. Remember, starch and glycogen both have branch chains and they both are ways of storing glucose. They're a bunch of glucose molecules stuck together. Lipids are fats, oils, and waxes. And if you remember correctly, lipids are in your lip balm. So it's easy to remember lip, lipids, lip balm, fats, oils, and waxes. They store and release large amounts of energy. Phospholipids are charged molecules that make up the cell membrane. There's a charged end or a polar end and a nonpolar end. Lipids store large amounts of energy. They can be chemical messengers. Phospholipids are important in membrane formation. They don't carry other molecules and they don't break down other molecules. So the correct answer, lipids have three functions, store energy, they're chemical messengers, and some of them make up the cell membrane. The phospholipid is good for cell membrane because it has a charged or polar tail and a nonpolar tail. There's a polar end and a nonpolar end, and that makes it ideal for making a cell membrane. Remember in the group protein, we're switching gears to a new group of biological molecules. Proteins are different from carbohydrates, is they, and they, they have nitrogen. And you can remember that proteins contain nitrogen because protein has an N in it. And proteins are comprised of amino acids, which also have an N in and which are held together with peptide bonds, also has an N in it. Enzymes, which has an N in it, are also a special kind of protein that can lower the ac activation energy. So if you have a hard time remembering that extra element in proteins, just look for the words associated with proteins. A lot of them have N in it. 
protein is in you. You are made of protein. Amino acids make up proteins, and here's that nitrogen in the amino acid. Or here's my lovely protein necklace, which is made out of individual amino acids bonded together with some funky functional groups. That's what the R is for. The R is for the unique group of atoms that make each amino acid different from the other ones. Remember the carboxyl group and the nitrogen group are always going to stay the same, but what's bonded to this carbon here, this middle carbon, is going to be different depending on what amino acid you have. It's a group of atoms that are, is a group of atoms that makes each amino acid unique. Enzymes are a special group of proteins. So you build a protein, you put lots of different amino acids together, and some of those proteins ends up being enzymes. Depends on the shape of the protein and, um, and the length of the chain. Enzymes are handy for your body because they lower activation energy. They make it easier for a reaction to happen by making it more likely that a, a molecule that the enzyme is holding onto when it's all curled up and takes on a particular shape will hold an atom in a particular way kind of like making a little place for that biological compound to come in and it'll hold it and let a reaction happen. And sometimes it brings two pieces together, sometimes it cuts them apart, but it makes that reaction easier to happen because there's a special little place inside the enzyme for it to happen. Some people think of it as a lock and key model. This is the enzyme here. This is an enzyme that's bonding two different compounds. The compounds come in, the enzyme changes shape to hold on to them, it makes that bond happen, and then a new compound leaves the enzyme, and the enzyme's ready for another round of making that reaction happen. I think of enzymes as a biochemical hug, because you can hug someone, you change your shape, you might like take two little kids, hug them, say, make up now, and they go off, they're holding hands, they've made up after a fight, and then you change your shape again. You didn't get used up in the reaction. You didn't, your arms didn't fall off, your legs didn't fall off, your nose is still there. You're still all together, you're still, you didn't change. Um, you just changed your shape and your shape changed back after you hugged. Nucleic acids are another group of biological molecules that we talked about. We talked about RNA, which is single-stranded and DNA, which is double-stranded. So DNA, double-stranded, RNA, single-stranded. RNA works outside the nucleus, DNA stays inside the nucleus and holds genetic information. RNA is kind of the worker bee, goes out and does the building of proteins. So RNA builds proteins, DNA holds that gene genetic in information. There's some differences. DNA is double-stranded, so D for double. They've got different bases. DNA has thiamine, where RNA has uracil. DNA is really, really long. One DNA molecule can be up, at, up to three meters. That's longer than your couch. Here's a good example of a DNA molecule. It's got two phosphate sugar backbones. In DNA, that sugar phosphate backbone is deoxyribonucleic acid. That's the D in DNA, stands for the sugar in the sugar phosphate backbone. You can see the sugar and the phosphate bonded together here. And these are the bases in the middle of the DNA. Those bases are held together by very loose hydrogen bonds. And we'll talk about how DNA unzips in another chapter. So we can match the, the characteristics of DNA and RNA. DNA is double-stranded, it has thiamine, it's very long, and it's got deoxyribose. RNA has got ribose, it's shorter, and it's got uracil instead of thiamine, and it's single-stranded. 
Let's look at the answers here. You might want to pause the video and check that out. This is important that you know the differences between RNA and DNA. Cellular respiration takes one glucose and makes about 38 ATP molecules out of it. So cellular respiration is an important way the body gets energy out of glucose. Glucose travels in the blood. ATP is what gets used in the cells. You've got ATP, and when you want energy from the ATP, you clip off this extra phosphate group, making it into ADP, and in that process you release a great deal of energy. Glucose, remember, travels around the body. There's G and O in glucose, which stands for go. It goes around the body in the bloodstream or in plants. It goes around in the xylem and phloem. ATP stays put in the cell. Remember, it's kind of like Vegas. What happens in the cell stays in the cell. ATP gets made there. It stays there. It gets used up. ATP is for the inside of cells. It does not go. Glucose goes. Let's talk about cellulose briefly. Cellulose is an important compound for plants. It's a bunch of glucose molecules bonded together in covalent bonds, and it's a very strong, rigid molecule. It's a carbohydrate, of course, because it's made out of sugars. Sugars make up carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates. The bonds between the atoms in cellulose are covalent. That's why it doesn't dissolve in water. When you take celery, which has a lot of cellulose in it, it makes it a crunchy, rigid plant, it doesn't dissolve in water. Your celery doesn't just disappear when you put it in water. It's a covalent bond, and that's important for plants because they use cellulose to stay rigid, and you wouldn't want your tree to just dissolve in water. This is a plant from my garden, and you can see there's lots of cellulose here, making it a very tall, um, rigid structure. This is the stem of a sunflower-like plant in a prairie here in Minnesota. The structure of the cellulose molecule makes it very important for the, its function. It has covalent bonds, it's a very long molecule and it's a very rigid molecule. And that's important for what plants use it for is maintaining their shape. Remember, there are four groups of organic compounds we talked about. Carbohydrates, they're made of either our sugars or complex carbohydrates are made of sugars. They're proteins, remember that N in protein stands for the nitrogen. Lipids are in lip balm, they're fats, oils, and waxes, and nucleic acids are important. They're your DNA and RNA, and they're in every cell. How do we store glucose? Well, as people, we store glucose as glycogen. So animals, here's an animal cell, store glucose as glycogen. Plants, here's a plant cell, store glucose as starch. Both have branch chains, both are made of glucose, but they're different kinds of molecules. This is a DNA molecule, it has two strands, and it carries genetic information. It's reproduced every time a cell divides, and that's a great and important process that we'll study later in the semester. Remember, DNA is double-stranded. It's got two sugar phosphate backbones, and that deoxyribose is in that sugar phosphate backbone. There are three ways DNA is different than RNA. It's got two strands. It's got different bases. It's got thiamine instead of uracil, and it's much longer. Here are some differences. You might want to pause and write those down so you can remember them. Okay, last thing, ATP has three phosphate groups. When you break one off, you get energy, just like when you eat a cookie. Cookie Monster would break off that last phosphate group and eat it, and he'd get energy. If you want to make ADP back into ATP, adenosine triphosphate 3, remember 3 like your tricycle, has three wheels, you've got to put in a lot of energy. Baking cookies takes a lot of work. 
So if you want to put a phosphate group back on,